Happy Sunday, everybody, and welcome to another Sunday morning view queue where I answer all the best viewer questions. And today, you guys had a bunch of new questions again, which I thank you for, including should you admit to your insurance agent that you are full time in your RV? What tools should you travel with? How do you stay okay in your rig in the winter? And much more. Hey gang, if you're wondering what I'm doing in bed, it's because I'm sick. So sorry if this is kind of laid back, but I just got this fabulous new bedding and I don't want to get out of this bed. I know some of you are going to ask me about this. It's like plush on one side and like Sherpa on the other. And um, I'll put a link to it in my gear page if anybody wants to see it. And also a lot of you asked me about the shoes I was wearing in the bike video. I'll link those also in my gear page under the tab as seen recently on YouTube. So I'm gonna get right into the questions because as usual, they were really great. Okay, the first question comes from Laura who said, love your videos. I'm a big fan of new to RVing, thank you. She said, are you going to change out to a composting toilet in your current RV? I had seen your video for the one you installed in your previous RV. Okay, so you guys probably know that in my last RV, I was in a leisure travel van, Unity, and it only had a 25 gallon water tank. One of the first things I decided to do was put in a composting toilet, which I actually really loved in that RV, um, but led to some major problems later when I was having repairs done. But I like the idea of the composting toilet, but the big driver for me was that I didn't want to use my water to be flushing the toilet. And with a 25 gallon tank, it really was great for me. Um, in my new RV, which is a Tiffin 24TW, I have a 40 gallon tank and um, I did not switch my composting toilet over from the old one to the new one. Um, because I had some major problems and I was just over it, not with the toilet itself, with a dealership that like drilled some massive holes in the side of my rig um, around the composting toilet. So I didn't bring it with me. Would I do it again? You know, I would do it again, maybe in a tiny house, maybe in an RV. You think you're going to have less work because you don't have to dump the black tank as much. But what I found was, hi, baby. Hey, look, everybody, it's the boy. Um, what I found was I was going to fill up the water anyway, so dumping the tanks was not that much of a hassle. You have to find places to dump the pee and stuff. But I do like the idea that um, you're not adding chemicals in, and it does save water. So in the future, I might add another one, but for now, I'm pretty happy with what I've got. I've got some other things going on, um, and so I just uh, personally am not going to make that change soon. But if anyone else is thinking about it, I was really a fan of the composting toilet. Um, not that hard to install, not that big of a deal. And um, if I decide to do it again in the future, I'll let you guys know. Okay, next question. If the boy, he's going to crawl right on my face because that's what he does. And he loves <laughs> this new blanket, which is like sleeping in a cloud. Okay, next question is from Heaven on Wheels. Um, our cats love the top entry litter box I found through you. I get asked all the time where I put the litter box because I'm in a small RV. I put it up in the foot area of the passenger seat and the only litter box that would fit for that is this top entry litter box. My kid is, you know, a grown cat. He had no problem acclimating um, and so that's what she's talking about. Um, she said, <laughs> sorry, this is great timing for him. She said, I'm worried the cats will try to escape the RV once they're traveling with us. Any suggestions? Okay. Can you simmer down for this question, buddy? Um, I want to tell you guys a really funny story. So my cat, this guy, you know, used to go outside. He was kind of a killer. And um, he just wants to be near me now. I don't know if it's an age thing or whatever, but he really has no interest in going outside. Um, he wants to be able to see me outside, but that's about it. But I'll tell you, one time... I was camping with some friends in a regional park in California somewhere. And when we got there, it was really packed. And we were trying to find two spots. And we ended up having to be really far away from each other on in this big park. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. And um, come on, buddy. There we go. Okay. Anyway, so this guy who likes to be near me all the time um, was in the rig. And I went to go meet my friends. And I had to walk way across this lot 
and it had, probably was a quarter mile or something, and I looked over in the reeds, and I saw this black cat going through the reeds next to this river, and I thought, who lets their cat out? That's really um, dangerous out here because there's like coyotes and stuff. And my friends had dogs that were barking, and um, you know, the cat just stayed away. So I walk back in the dark to my rig, and I get inside, and I hear the cat meowing, but I can't tell from where. And I open up the door, and he was outside. This is the only time it's ever happened. And um, then I realized that when we were going back and forth about the spots, we were talking through my passenger window, and I had unrolled it to talk to them, and I left it unrolled about that much, had no idea I had done it. And I think what happened was when I left to see my friends, he jumped out that window and followed me. And the cat that I saw was actually him. And I'm really lucky. He followed me. He followed me back. I think that's what happened. But otherwise, no, he, my cat has no interest in getting out, but every cat is different. Now I know I just said he got out to follow me, but you know, most of the time he can see me out the window and he's fine. I do know other people whose cats have bolted and they have not found them again. So, you know, it's tricky. You can keep your cat on a leash. Um, I also have a tent for this guy outside. You're just going to have to play it by ear. Do you have the kind of cat that you open the door and they want to bolt out? This guy has no interest in that. So I'd be um, interested to see what the other cat owners have to say down below. So everybody, please jump in and um, let our um, friend here know how you keep your cats from running away when you're on the road. Right? Don't run away. This one is definitely going to be an audience participation question from Marla Hansen. She said, love your videos. What should be in an RV toolbox? Literal tools. Well, I did a whole video on maintenance and what should go in the toolbox if you go back and look for that one. So look, everybody's gonna be different because we're all gonna have different types of rigs, right? But if I had to kind of siphon it down to the like five tools that I use most often, it might surprise you. For me, it is an oil funnel, <laughs> because I have to add oil to my generator frequently. Um, a good sturdy brush for cleaning because I found that it's important to clean um, the sides of the windows and also the slide if you have a slide or you are stabilizing jacks, all that stuff, you have to really scrub out the dirt before you like oil it. Otherwise you can have a lot of problems and I would have never thought to put that in a toolbox. There he goes. Also, um, a hammer which might surprise you, screwdrivers, and WD-40, and a hatchet. Now, here's why. Um, I have gotten a rock stuck between my back dually tires before. The only thing I could get it out with was a hammer. So now I don't go without a hammer. Screwdrivers of different sizes are important because every month or so, I find that I have to go through and tighten up the screws in my cabinets, for example. Um, otherwise, they start to rattle a little bit because when you're going down the road, um, they tend to loosen up a little bit. Now, this is not the major stuff. This is like maintenance minor stuff if you want to know just a few things. Um, WD-40, you know, you can get that in different um, viscosity and stuff like that. Like there's one you can get for your window seal so they don't stick, one for your slide, you know, one for any moving part, like if your steps come in and out, that's another thing you need to kind of clean and oil or else they get jammed up and they don't want to work right. So that's an important one for me. And a hatchet. <laughs> now I got a hatchet for chopping wood and I can't tell you um, how handy that's come in, um, either because I need a sharp edge on something or, um, you know, I need the heavy back edge on something. So everybody's going to be different and I'd love to know what other people think. I know some people use a drill, you know, to get their, um, legs to go up and down if they have a trailer or, um, other things. I would also say, be sure that you have some, um, cables to get your battery jumped. And if you don't camp with other people, I think it's important to have, um, one of the boxes that can jump your car battery um, if you don't have that ability to jump your car battery from your house batteries because I have had my battery in the engine die a few times out on the road solo um, and so it's important that you are um, ready for that if it happens. I hope that helps. Please you guys down below why don't we all list like our top three tools that we couldn't do without on the road if you're already on the road. Okay moving on Marla Moss says my dilemma is how to downsize my closet and my hundreds of clothes, painting crafts, jewelry crafts, etc. How do you downsize your creativity? And then Carol said, how do you deal with the emotion of downsizing, purging belongings and leaving what you know when you went on the road? Okay, that's a really good question because we are emotionally attached to our stuff. And here's what I find to be true. 
we have an idea of who we want to be when we go on the road. And, you know, you might imagine that you're going to be like in the floppy hat, you know, with the little Chinese lanterns and, you, you know, the perfect mobile life. And what I found is that I wear the same five outfits, as you guys probably have noticed over and over, because they're my favorite go-to outfits. And they wash easy and they store easy. And so I found that the clothes that I thought I needed, like I, I've said before, I had an outfit in here in case I needed to go to a funeral. And I had an outfit in here in case I wanted to go to a museum. And, and I found that I just wasn't using that stuff. And so what I do is I go through everything in this rig and I just did it again. I go through about every six months, and if I have not used an item in the last six months, it goes. And I know people that it was worth 100 bucks a month to keep a storage unit, like in a central location, so if they had to go back and forth and change out what they were going to do, um, or what they were going to keep, then that was worth it to them. I would say the good thing about keeping only the clothes that you're really going to wear is that you love every single outfit. There's not like you know, that pair of pants that never work with anything else and you're always trying to make it work. Everything works. Um, the hard part is finding place to store, at least for me, even the stuff that you want to use all the time. As for like crafts and creativity, you guys know that I paint and I had to scale it down because, you know, I used to work on a half sheet or a full sheet size of watercolor paper, you know, and now, you know, I'll do cards or I'll do, you know, little pieces of paper. Um, and it was hard for me not to bring every little thing that I had. I would say that it's such a little space in an RV that have things that resonate emotionally with you. Like over here next to me, I have a little Buddha sitting here um, that I'll show you guys. That um, he's, he's just a smiling dude. And I have had him with me for years and years. And I bring him with me because I wake up in the morning. There's, you know, that dude smiling at me. And, you know, it's just stuff like that. That's a heavy thing, but I decided to bring it with me. Now, could I bring everything else that I had? No, I couldn't. I had to choose one thing. And um, look, it's not forever. You know, when you go out on the road, living in an RV is just another housing option. You just have a smaller space. You can purchase things again, or you can let things go later and bring other things on board. It seems like a really big decision, and it is, because most of us are going from 1,000 square feet to 200 square feet or something like that. Um, so it can seem really daunting and it is, but I'll tell you this. What I found is I didn't need three different size saucepans. For example, I didn't need to have, you know, five pairs of jeans. I didn't need to have, um, 10 pairs of shoes. I've got like four pairs of shoes in here and it, you'll find out when you get on the road, what those things are that you need. And, um, you just guess in the beginning and then tweak it. That's all. I hope that helps. Oh, this is a good one. Peggy R says, and this is really good for this time. My question is about RVing in colder weather. We have two kids who live in Denver and Loveland, Colorado, and one who lives near Buffalo, New York. My husband, who thinks I'm nuts for wanting to hit the road, asked how we visit the kids during the winter. Is it possible to do winter temps in an RV? Okay, yes, absolutely. I mean, it depends on what the roads are going to be like and what you're driving and what you're pulling. But um, I'll tell you that I have a blog post. It was one of the first blog posts I ever did before I had a YouTube channel. So if you go to creativityrv.com, my newest posts are first. So just, you know, scroll all the way to the end and you'll see it. Um, I have a story with pictures about how I did this. I spent my very first winter um, in a state park in Colorado. And um, there were absolutely freezing temperatures and very high winds. But what I found is this. Everyone's going to be different, you guys. Now, some people go long term in an area and they have like insulated water hoses and they get the really expensive skirts that go around their RV. I didn't want to do that because I was only going to be in cold weather that one time or once in a while. And I'll tell you, I have camped in the snow a few times and it's no big deal. Um, even when my my tanks were exposed in my last rig, as long as I kept the heat on inside, it was OK. I filled up my water tank so it wasn't as easy to freeze. And then um, I unhooked it from the spigot, okay? Then I put the big roll of Reflectix, and I have this all in the blog post, but I rolled it around the RV and put it inside of the bins so the doors of the, my bins were holding it in place. And then I found what was really making it colder in my undercarriage was the space for my engine back. So I got like a moving box and I folded it in half and I wedged it behind my front wheels. So what I did is I created a box that, you know, under my RV that could trap heat. I had a hookup in that state park. 
So I got like heater and I plugged it into the power tower and I got a temperature gauge that told me what the temperature was underneath my undercarriage that I could see from inside. And I'll tell you, it was warmer under my undercarriage than sometimes it was inside my RV. It was like in the 60s. It worked great. Okay, and finally, Bup, the cat is scratching something next to the camera. So if he's knocking you guys around, I'm sorry. Okay, um, Bup Key finally says, we're downsizing our house to go full time. Congratulations. But how do we downsize our internet? We currently follow about 20 RV YouTube channels and our home cable data usage runs about 350 gigabytes. Most RVers seem to have a cell data plan that limits them to 20 to 40. That's a big difference. Can you still watch YouTube on the road and how do you squeeze down your usage? Okay, so you guys might remember that I did a video of these two gals a few months ago where I said best mobile RV internet setup ever. I actually got the same kind of setup that they have that has three different carriers and my video on that is going to be coming out in about a month. That's one of the ones that's in production. Um, it is hard to go from not even after thinking about it to only using like 20 gigabytes a month or less. So it's almost like your water usage, you know, or your electricity usage or trash. The stuff that you have to think about, um, you know, conserving on the road that you didn't have to think about before but there are strategies to do it and it really is not that bad. So I'll talk about it more then, but I want to tell you this. Download anything you can while you have Wi-Fi. So let's say you're using that 355 gigabytes because you are streaming. Streaming takes a lot of data. So if you have like Netflix, for example, um, or you want to download some free podcasts or books on tape or whatever, whenever you're going through a town or you're in a library with Wi-Fi or a visitor center or um, a Starbucks or something like that when you're in town, download everything you can so that you can watch it or listen to it offline later. You can do the same thing with your maps for example. So whatever it is that you're finding is using up your data, try to download that in advance. And the other thing I wanted to tell you since you ask is that you can get something called YouTube Premium. I have it. Um, I think it's $8.99 a month. I'm sure somebody will correct me because I'm sure that's not exactly right. But with YouTube Premium, you can download YouTube videos. So instead of having like a watch list now, I have like 300 videos or something that I have downloaded to watch when I'm in the middle of nowhere and don't have a signal. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Share with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm going to go back to bed soon and get rid of this crud. I hope you guys are all doing well out there, and I hope to see you on the road. And so does the boy. Boy. Why are you getting in front of the... Why? Oh, are we going to play now? 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 Why can't you just get the fly, huh? Why can't you get that fly? Why can't you get that fly? Why can't you get that fly? Bye, everybody.